I've demonstrated a number of times using the PARF guide and the PARF guide Mark II to make these 20 millimeter holes 96 millimeters on center and perfectly square, CNC quality. But a lot of my subscribers don't plan on purchasing that and so they want to drill these holes with the tools they have. And so I've created this pattern, this template to be used with a router. I'm Ron Paul. And this is the Smart Wood Shop. If you want to get a detailed set of plans to build a Smart Wood Shop for yourself or one of my workbenches, link in the description below. It'll take you right to our website, to our store, where you can purchase the plans and download them immediately 24-7, 365. Also in our store, you'll find some affiliate links from great companies like TSO, Atlas 46, and Amazon. If you use those links, they will share a little bit with us, helps us pay to make these videos and not charge you any extra. I'm not gonna say you'll get the precision that you get with the PARF guide or with the CNC machine, but it's very close. In fact, I'll show you this one, this bench here, I've made a video showing this exact bench being made with the PARF guide Mark II, and I made this one with shop tools. And if I line it up, drop in a couple of bench dogs and then I can go through and every hole lines up so again maybe not quite the precision of these but so close that in woodworking it's going to be as as precise as anything that you'll need if you take the time to lay it out and I will be showing you this. I'll be actually showing you making this template so you'll see how I laid it all out and the tools that I used to make it. The first choice would be to take this design to a CNC shop and have them make it for you. And then it is going to be very precise. Realize that it's very easy when using a pattern bit to mess up your pattern. I've done it a number of times and it's the reason that I prefer the bushing method for 99.9 percent .9 of all the template routing I do but in this case I needed this precise 20 millimeter and to come up with a bushing with the offset and uh, and drill a hole big enough to have that off offset be exactly 20 millimeters it's possible but it's very difficult and on top of that when I want to move it around to make new holes the, the holes in the template would be larger than the 20 millimeter holes cut and so I couldn't use the bench dogs for stepping off more holes. So I'm, this is one of those situations that is made for a pattern bit but again with pattern bits and the bearing right at the cutter there's a good chance you're gonna mess up and cut one of your holes wrong and if you've already got another one made then you're you're backed up and you can then make a third one just to you know You've done the work, so take advantage and, and have a, a backup. In fact, uh, the first time I used this, I uh, miscalculated the bearing and I messed up a hole. I'm going to be able to repair it. I've already got it filled and I'm going to finish that up and, and redrill that hole. I have very specific reasons for the length and the width of this. I could have made a smaller one, uh, narrower or longer. I could have made one the full size of the bench top. But what I decided to do was go with a size that would give me the maximum precision and still make it usable for making other things other than big bench tops. Taking my standard bench top, and this is the size that I use for my um, smart compact bench, also my smart total station. And I went more than halfway because I want to be able to do this quarter and then move it over, drop in bench dogs in the holes I've cut and finish up and then I want to be able to go to this side. So I've got this so that I can set it four times and make one of these bench tops. So it goes beyond the center lengthwise and it goes beyond the center widthwise. And it's a multiple of 96 millimeters. All of my workbenches are based on the 32 millimeter system and it doesn't matter if you don't use millimeter. It's still the way to go with your workbench. 96 millimeters in from the edge, 96 millimeters between set of holes all the way around the perimeter that are 
32 millimeters in from the edge. I added a set of holes at 48 or dead center between the 96 millimeter. So I've got one set of holes there, and then I've gone over and done another set of holes that are 32 millimeters off this set of holes. And the reason I've added those two lines of holes, I don't have them on my bench, you can see, is just so that if I'm making a fixture, uh, making something that I'm gonna work with on the bench, that I've got all of the spacings that I'll need. So I can have 32 millimeter spacing, I can have 48, I can have 64, and I can have 96. So I've marked those off so that I don't accidentally cut those. You're not gonna need to purchase any special tools to make this. You're gonna be able to make it with the tools that you have in your shop with one exception. And that is a 20 millimeter Forstner bit. I'm gonna specifically recommend this 20 millimeter Forstner bit. And this is the one that came with the PARF guide. And I'll put a link for that in the description, for this uh, in the description down below. The reason I like this one for making the bench dog holes is this tip that it has protrudes quite a bit. And this is going to be what gives you a lot of accuracy because you're gonna pre-drill the pilot holes and then this is gonna drop precisely in there. And it, again, it makes a perfect 20 millimeter hole. It's a high quality bit. It's uh, carbide tipped and it is about $30. A tool that I'm gonna highly recommend, but it is optional, is this drill guide. It's basically uh, a portable drill press for your drill. And all it does is allow you to put your drill bit in it. And then when you make your hole, you drop that tip into your pilot bit and it holds it perfectly plumb. I chose this one because it's aluminum. It has some, uh, the advantage of having this V cut out on it, which is good if you're cutting through anything round, a dowel or something like that. It also comes with different inserts and I'll have a lot of uses for this beyond just making the template. You don't have to buy this. You can do it by eye or you can make something like this. This is just a piece of plywood with uh, a 45 cut on, on the ends of one piece of, of 18 millimeter and then I've screwed them together but spaced them apart with a piece of 12 millimeter and then I've just screwed another piece of 18 millimeter on the bottom. And this is just to help you uh, drill straight down so I can put my drill on here, drop the tip into the hole, kind of eyeball it, get it so it looks pretty plumb, and then run it down that way. And so that will give you some of the help that this would, not quite as good, not as fast, but it's definitely something you can make uh, with scrap in the shop. And I do think you'll get better results with this than if you try to eyeball it. To begin with, I want to make sure that the template itself is completely perfectly square. So I checked it a number of different ways, make sure it was the right length uh, and the right width all the way across. Then I checked, uh, square taped it. And then as I laid out, I was using uh, my tape measure. It was all on 96 millimeter uh, spacing. And of course it'd be an exact spacing up, down, left, right because of the size that I cut the piece. I used a mechanical pencil with a really thin lead. Again, I wanted it to be very precise. And so as I laid out the lines, um, I would continue to check the spacing and I would check the hypotenuse of every single line. I just kept checking and rechecking and rechecking to make sure that, you know, that I got the right dimension no matter which way I measured it. And then I used a, uh, a very pointy scratch all and I put a little a divot in at each cross point where I was going to next do the drill the pilot holes. So I wanted to make sure that, you know, again, being very precise, very thin pencil lines, and then uh, the very sharp point to get it uh, exactly the cross sections. And then I used uh, a, a drill bit to drill the pilot hole. And I used a jig I made in the shop to get the holes fairly plumb. Then on the back side, the first thing I did was drill the 20 millimeter holes uh, not all the way through. These are just the ones to uh, make it so the backside will be clean. And I used my jig to get all of these. I could do those without the jig, but um, I had it. I flipped it over. I did a few holes with the shop made jig. Then I switched over to my favorite method the, with the um, drill guide that I had purchased. And then I got out the 
Parf Guide Mark II, I wanted to do a handful of the holes using the pins in the holes I had drilled so that I could confirm that I was getting the accuracy that I would have gotten with the Mark II. And everything laid out, so I was pretty happy with that. I put it away and then went back to using the um, drill guide that I had purchased. So that was, that was the method I thought was the quickest and being that I had the pilot holes drilled and they were very accurate, I was pretty comfortable being able to um, use the drill bit to uh, get the holes perfectly. Then I did a little test cut on a piece to make sure that um, everything laid out. Then I marked out the face with lines to indicate the non-standard holes, the 32 millimeter. And then I had two extra rows of holes that I'd done, all special use. And I didn't want to accidentally drill into those when I was making my final pieces. Once you've taken your time and you've made it or you've had somebody cut one for you at the CNC shop, how do you use it? Well, it's pretty simple. I don't have a bench to show you, but if I were doing this bench, I would just line it up on the two edges. Obviously, there'd be no holes in the bench. I'd be starting, and so it's designed to be put flush, and this is, I've, I've made, uh, taken a lot of care to make sure that this is perfectly, this rectangle is perfectly square. I've checked it, I've cross-taped it, I've done the hypotenuse. Um, You'll see that in the video. I've, I've taken a lot of care to make sure that, that this is perfectly square. And so then I'll line it up on my bench and then I will take a couple of screws and just screw it into the bench top. Now I could use clamps. That'd be, uh, if you don't want to put any holes in, I just find it faster to use some wood screws and at least for the start. But once I uh, make the holes, then uh, the, cut the holes in the bench on this section. Then what I would do is slide it over and come back the other way. When I do this, I'm already gonna have a set of holes that are drilled from the first placement. And now I can actually use uh, bench dogs to make sure that I'm getting the alignment to continue. It's another reason I went a little larger uh, I, you know, I said I could have made a small square, or small rectangle, but obviously there's going to be more precision the bigger the template is. If you're trying to do a little one off this corner and march it off, it, it, no matter how perfect it is, that's going to introduce minor errors in each movement. A, a little error that you couldn't even perceive is going to be multiplied by the number of times you have to move it. So with, with this, I only have to move it four times to make this bench top. But I can then line this up and I could just put a clamp on here or put a couple screws in and then make the rest of the holes. And then I would push it over or you could also flip it. If you started on this end and you flipped this way and then you flipped that way, then you're going to uh, even minimize your errors um, more because you're going to always be starting off of the same starting point. But if you've made this right, that shouldn't really matter. I could slide it over and then go that way with it. And so I'd be, you know, I'd be able to make the bench a lot quicker than I could with the PARF guide. And uh, it would actually cut faster than, than any CNC machine uh, that I've seen. I don't have a bench to cut to demonstrate it, but I do have these um, transformers, these smart transformers that I'm working on to extend the functionality of my smaller bench. How do I get a small bench to function as a big bench? And I've come up with these transformers that extend the width and I place them with clamps out past the edges so it also extends the length. So with one on each end and one in the middle, now I've got a bigger bench without having to carry a bigger bench to the job. Now this isn't 100% done. I have a dado that I'm going to be cutting down from the first hole in all the way through, actually in the second row, all the way through. And that's where I actually use my clamps uh, in the bench when it's cantilevered over. And I've, made, I've designed them so that there's no right, left, or middle. They're all cut exactly the same. So with the dado there, I can just spin it around and put one on this side. So that, that's part of the uh, making it simpler. And obviously I made it a multiple of, of uh, 96 millimeters just the way the bench is, and that helps with the lining up of the dog holes. 
But anyway, I have to uh, make these, and I made one with the Parf Guide Mark II, and then I was going to make a second one, and I went, wait a minute, I, I've already got one made. Now I could use a pattern bit, and that's what gave me the idea to make this. So I stepped back, and I made this from scratch, and then I used this to make this. And now I could just take this and make another one. But I want to demonstrate starting from scratch because you'll be able to use this for a lot more than just workbenches. So the first and most important thing is to put my sacrificial strips on. I don't want to be routing into my bench top or cutting into my bench top. Now because I had started this project before I made this template, I already have the holes laid out um, with the parf guide, but I'm going to ignore them because I will be just routing right through those. Now I do have one hole that I can't use because I damaged this template and I haven't repaired it yet. But that's not a problem. I'll just be able to go back and cut that hole once I shift it over. You can see that the, uh, there's, a, there's a row of holes actually. Yeah, there's a row of holes and then the 32. So two rows of holes that this template is not going to be big enough to reach. And so this will be just like uh, doing the bench where I'm going to have to move it. I'm going to have to set it up two times to make this cut. And it's kind of fun. I can look down and see these pilot holes and they appear to be dead center in these holes. And again, those were made with the Parf Guide Mark II, which is CNC quality. So uh, it, it's just further evidence that if you take your time and make this right, that it will be very, very accurate. Once I start cutting, I don't want to think about some of the holes that I don't want to cut. So I'm going to go ahead and just mark those off with some tape just to hide them or to bring them to my attention. And then this row of holes, I'm not going to cut there because that's to the edge. I don't really need to tape those, but I'll do it just to speed things up. And so if I take a quick look, I can see that I've got wood everywhere these holes are. And I don't want to do this set until I get out here. So I'll cover those as well. It's critical that I get the bearing to ride onto the pattern material. In fact, I made this out of 18 millimeter instead of 12 millimeter. Most all of my uh, patterns or templates are made with 12, but because I'm going to a pattern bit, I wanted that extra security of having a little more uh, meat to have the bearing ride on to help prevent me from messing up my piece that I'm cutting or my template. So the first thing I'm going to do is make sure that I set my depth stop so that the bearing is all the way into the pattern. And now that I have it set to where the cut is, I'll drop the depth stop and tighten that on. When using a pattern bit, we're forced to make the entire cut all the way through at once because we can't start shallower because the bearing won't be hitting the pattern. We'll be just cutting our pattern up. So I've got it set up. I've got my depth stop set. I'm going to go all the way through, bottom that out. I'm going, to I'm going to visually find center, and then I'm going to cut all the way through, push all the way down before I pull into the pattern. That's important. Otherwise, you'll be cutting your pattern. Also, make sure that when you are done with the cut, the hole, bring your router all the way back up. Kind of come to the middle of your hole there and come all the way back up. You don't want to be coming up part of the way and then move it in the next hole because you will cut into your surface.
I made a mistake. I forgot this last row of holes. The beauty of the template, it's pretty easy to go back and add them in. It only took 10 minutes to cut out all of these holes. And now that I have this one made, I can take it and lay it as a template on my other four, five, six, seven, and just follow through and make the cuts. I'm amazed every day in working with these system holes, 20 millimeter holes spaced 96 millimeters apart. You know, I scratched my head in the beginning. I wasn't sure. My first bench, I did four inch centers, three quarter inch bench dog holes. But there's so much less available out there to fit that spacing. This is the industry standard. And even though I'm an imperial shop, they work great. They work better for me than the four inch spacing three quarters that I used to use. So I encourage you to take a hard look at it and also realize there's so much you can do when you go with an industry standard system. Not only all the, the bench dogs and the different hold downs and the clamps and the fixtures and all the things that are available to fit them, but all the stuff that you can make like these bench extensions and some other really cool stuff that I'm working on that I'm gonna be excited to show you as I finish them up. If you enjoyed this video, if you learned anything, if you'd like to see me make more, give me a thumbs up and subscribe. And remember when you subscribe, it's important to ring that bell because that's the only way YouTube's gonna let you know that I've put up a new video. Thanks for dropping into the Smart Wood Shop. You stay safe and have a great day.